everyone, and welcome to Microsoft Access 2016 Basics. My name is Steve Bishop, and in this video, we're going to take a look at one-to-many relationships. So let's say that we have a group of people. Now, each one of them has a colored shirt, a red shirt, an orange shirt, or a blue shirt. And let's say that we wanted to categorize each one of these people according to the shirt that they're wearing. So we move them into their perspective categories, and we could say that one color is worn by many people. So there are many people wearing a red shirt. There are many people wearing an orange shirt, and there are many people wearing a blue shirt. This is the essence of a one-to-many relationship, one color for many people. But what would be a practical business application of this organization? Well, what if instead of organizing them by the color of their shirts, we took a look at their type? What kind of person are they to us? Are they a customer, a vendor, or an employee? And for that, we could say one category for many people. Let's see an example of this applied to our Access database. So I'm going to go ahead and add another field here, and I'm going to call this person type. And we're going to set it to just a short text. That's fine. And then we can go back to the data sheet view. And let's enter some values in for these person types. So let's say that I am an employee. And then Shane might be a customer. And let's say Denise is also a customer. We'll add one more person to our list here. Let's say Joyce Reynolds. And her date of birth, let's just pick some random date and time here. How about January 17th of last year? Now we'll go ahead and say that Joyce is also a customer. So that way, we have three customers and one employee. Notice that we're starting to duplicate data, though. If you're duplicating values across multiple records, that should be an indication that you should be doing something called normalizing your database. Normalizing your data is essentially figuring out what pieces of data you should extract and put into a separate table. Let's create that table. So I'm going to go up to the Create tab and click Table Design. Now, I'm going to go ahead and name this first field Type Name and set it to the short text data. Then I'm going to right click on the Table 1 tab and click Save. Now this table is going to contain all of the different people types. So let's call this People Types. Now notice that we see that there is no primary key defined. Now it's asking me if I want to create the primary key right now, but I'm not going to do that just yet. I'm going to click No for now. And then let's switch over to the data sheet view for our people types. Now, if you recall, I had two different types. I had employees. I'm just going to give it a singular of employee here. And then customer. Now, let me ask you a question. If I'm going to replace person type with a value from the people's type table, how am I supposed to relate this record here with this record here? Well, that's where a primary key comes into play. Now, a primary key is a field on a table that helps to uniquely identify each record. So for my people table, the primary key is the ID field because no two records share the same ID. That's why they're automatically incremented. So how then do I associate this record with this employee type name? Well, the answer is I need a primary key on my people types table so that I can uniquely identify each one of the records inside of the people types. Then I can go back over here to my people table and change this from the actual text value to the unique ID of the people type that it refers to. So let's go ahead and add another column to our people types. I'm going to actually put it above the type name. So let's insert a row. And I'm going to change this field name to ID and set it to 
auto number. Now, this doesn't inherently make this a primary key. What I have to do is select on the ID column here, or the ID field, and click on the primary key button here. Let's go ahead and save that. And let's change over to the datasheet view. You'll notice that Access has already populated the ID field for us with some unique values for each of the people types. Now we can use those unique values of one and two to say what kind of people are in our people table. So employee type we know was actually a one and customer was a two. But we're gonna have a little bit of a problem here. And that is the person type field, if you recall, is actually a text type. It was a short text. But the data that we're storing in here is actually a number for the ID of people types. So we need to change the data type for our person type to a number. Furthermore, I need to make sure that the field size field here of our person type data type is set to long integer and matches the same data type that I have for my ID column on people types. So let's go ahead and take a look at the design view of our people types and make sure it does indeed say long integer. So that way the data type of our ID field on people types matches the data type for our person type here, which is long integer as well. Let's go ahead and save that. And now what you're gonna see is that some data may be lost. And the reason for this is because of the data type change that we made to the person type field. We went from text to numbers. And because of that, some of the validation rules might be violated. Do we want to continue anyway? I'm going to go ahead and click on yes. Now, if we switch back over to the data sheet view, we should be all set to go though. All of our values are still working one and two, and our people types also have the ID field here. Let's right click and go to data sheet view and you can see one and two. Now, when we go to add another person to our people table, we need to also add the person type ID value. Let's go ahead and add one more person to our people table. Let's go with John Smith and set the date of birth to 12, 15, 1985. We'll also set his salary just a little bit less. Now over here for person type, we're gonna say that he is also an employee. And if you recall, the one is the value that we set for the employee people type. So that's how we set up a one-to-many relationship. We have one people type with many different people who belong to that type. In this case, we have two employees and we have three customers. Now, the one important thing I want to point out about what we've done here is we've actually saved ourselves on memory. That's the reason we do this. We could obviously put customer and employee as text fields for person type, but then think of how many different values we'd be putting in this person type field. That's a lot more data that we would have to store in this people table. Whereas over here in our people types, we only need the two records now, and the values that we store for our person type are just numbers. One final note to point out is that there's a term for this person type field now. Since it is a reference field to another table, we call it a foreign key. So this ID field, which contains unique values, one for each record, is called the primary key, while a field that contains values that point to a unique value of a different table are called foreign keys. These primary keys and foreign keys are the crux of what creates a relational database. Without them, we wouldn't be able to organize our data in this relational way. Yeah.